Hello Year 7 and welcome to this lesson and we are starting a new topic and that topic is looking at the continent of Africa. Now you are going to need a pen or pencil and a piece of paper for this lesson so if you don't already have those things please pause the video and go and get them now. Okay, so you've got your pen and paper. What you need to do for me is number one to 10 down the margin. And I would like you to write down 10 words that come to mind when you think of the continent of Africa. So please pause the video again and do that now for me. So with your 10 words, you might have examples like the ones I've just got here. You might have put deserts, you might have put lions, you might have put a you new know, tribal people such as the Maasai tribe. But I can guarantee if we were doing this in school and we had a whole class of us and we looked at our answers, we would end up with way more than 10 words. You would all have thought of different things based on your own ideas and your own experiences. And we would call these ideas and experiences our perceptions. And that's partly what this lesson is about. It's to think about what our ideas or what our perceptions of Africa are like and to just ask ourselves how true they are and what we're basing them on. So I've just got a couple of examples coming up now of what we mean by perception. So if we look at this screen, what do you see? Some of you might see an old woman and some of you might see a young lady. And if you're only seeing one of them, it's really hard to see the other. So I'll try and point them out to you. So first of all, let's look at the young lady. Here is the top of her head and it's like she's wearing a hat with a feather on it. Here's maybe her hair or the back of her hat. This is her face here. Here's her eyelashes and nose. And this is her chin. So it's like she's facing away from you. Here's her ear. Here's like a collar that she's wearing around her neck. This is her neck. And here is like a big fluff, sort of fluffy coat. If you're seeing the old lady, the old lady's face is sideways on rather than being turned away from you like the young woman. Here's her chin. And here's her mouth. Okay. Here's her nose. Here's an eye. Here's her other eye, just here, the eyelashes. And this is kind of like a, a headscarf or something like that she's wearing. Okay, so now I've pointed them out, maybe you can see both or maybe you can still only see one. If you can only see one of them, maybe get somebody else and see if they can see the other one and point it out to you. Because like I said, it can be really, really hard to see both. Here is another example. Okay, so what do you see in this picture? Have a look at it. And again, people see different things. Some people see a frog and some people see a horse with its, a horse's head on the side. So if you're seeing the frog, this is like um, a bit of grass or a lily pad or something that the frog is sat on. Here's its back legs. Here's its front legs. Coming up here, here's the frog's face and head. So here's the eye. Here's its mouth. If you're seeing a horse, the horse is on its side. So this is the horse's mane and it's just the horse's head. So here's the mane, here's the two ears, here's the horse's eye, so its head's on the side, we can only see one of the eyes. And this is the horse's nose here, there's his nostrils, and there's um, the horse's mouth and the bottom of its head is just there. So again, um, you know, if you can only see one of them, maybe grab somebody else in your house, see if they can see the other one and, and point it out to you clearly. Um, but, you know, different people see different things. And when we do do this in class, it always leads to a sort of a, a big discussion about why people see things in different ways. Maybe it's to do with animals that you like or a pet that you have at home or you know, a book you're reading or a TV show you've seen, something like that, that means you're more likely to see one or the other. So things are not always as they seem. And that's because as individuals, because of our perceptions, the way we see things and the way we think about things are different. So linking that to our topic about Africa, we are going to have a look at what our ideas of Africa are like and to see if we have got any misconceptions. 
So a few key words for us. Perception means the way that we think about a particular thing. A misconception is an idea that's wrong. Okay, we've got faulty information or faulty thinking and it gives us a false idea about something. And then influences. Influences are the things that affect our opinions. So it's likely that a lot of you have not been to any of the any of the countries in Africa. Um, or if you have been, you've only been as a very brief holiday. So for example, I've been to Egypt, but I went on a diving holiday to Sharm El Sheikh and all I really did was be in my hotel, go around the Sharm El Sheikh in the evening or go diving. I don't feel like that really gave me an idea of what the continent of Africa is like. Okay, Africa is lots and lots of different countries and those countries all have their own languages and environment and culture and religion. And I don't feel like just because I went to Egypt for a week that I have got any idea of what Africa is really like. Yet I have got ideas about it. I have got perceptions and some of them are probably misconceptions. They are faulty information and faulty thinking because I have been influenced by things other than the African continent itself. I have got my ideas from somewhere else and maybe those ideas are wrong. So maybe if you've got family in Africa um, somewhere, you might have visited some of those countries and you might you know, have a clearer idea about it than some of the rest of us. Or maybe you're sort of a bit like me and you are basing your ideas of what the African continent is like and what all those countries are like on things that are not Africa itself. So if that's the case, what are we basing our ideas upon? So let's have a little look at where we might get our ideas from if we've not really visited Africa. So first of all, we've got the television, somewhere that we get loads and loads of ideas from because those ideas are beamed right into our front rooms or right into our bedrooms. And we look at adverts and news coverage and documentaries and films, things like that. We've got social media, which is very, very powerful. Facebook campaigns, Twitter hashtags, um, Instagram accounts. We have got older members of our families who sometimes might have quite old fashioned ideas that don't match with our own or don't match with the modern world and the way it is today. We've got what we learn in school. Okay. We have got celebrities. So more and more, we have got celebrities from African countries sort of coming forward, using social media, sharing their music or their art or their performances or their films. And that is changing people's ideas about African nations and what they are really like. And finally, we have got national coverage from global events like um, the World Cup held in 2010, the Football World Cup. Okay. So lots of different ways that we are gaining our information. So go back now, please, to your pen and paper, because we've got a bit of a true or false coming up. And there are five questions. So one to five in your margin. And all you need to put is true or false for what you think about these statements. So first of all, Africa is the biggest continent in the world. OK, so true or false. You don't have to write out the sentence. You just need to put true or false. Number two, there's 44 countries in Africa. So what do you think? Is that true? Is Africa the continent made up of 44 different countries? The population of the whole of Africa is 1.2 billion people. Is that true? It never snows in Africa. Is that true or false? And finally, number five, there are fewer than 1,000 different mammal species in Africa. So pop down what you think. One to five, are they true or false? If you need a bit more time, pause the video because I'm going to show you the answers now. OK, so let's have a look. So our first statement that Africa was the biggest continent in the world, that is false. It is the second biggest continent in the world. The biggest is Asia. OK, the second question that there are 44 countries in Africa. That's false. There are 54. And look at that. I have got a spelling mistake. Let's correct that now. There we go. It's false. There's 54 
um, countries in Africa, not 44. The population of Africa is 1.2 billion. That is true. Okay. The idea that it never snows in Africa, that's false. It snows in lots of mountain areas, such as the Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. And finally, that there are fewer than 1,000 different mammal species in Africa. Well, that is false. There are around 1,100 different mammals in Africa. So all of those should have been false, apart from number three, which was true. And just to show you a little image of the continent and how big it is, have a look at this screen here. That shows you how big the continent of Africa is compared to lots of other different places. So we could spit, we could um, fit all of these different countries into the African continent. So we've got the USA, we have got China, we have got Japan, we've got India, Eastern Europe, Italy, Switzerland, Germany, France, Belgium, Spain. OK, and the UK is only the size of the island of Madagascar. So it is really, really big. OK, not as big as Asia, but still really big. OK, we are going to do an activity now where we are going to look at our own ideas of what we think the African nation is like. Sorry, the African continent, rather. Sorry, is like. Because if you were going to travel through the African continent from north to south or from east to west, you would see a huge range of different people, places and cultures, and that's because it's really diverse. And what we mean by the word diverse is it's really, really different. There's lots of different things going on, lots of different environments, lots of different people, lots of different cultures and religious systems. OK, so we are going to look at 18 different photos. And so what I need you to do is on your piece of paper, number one to 18 in the margin. OK, and for each photo, you are going to just pop down yes or no, because you either think it is Africa somewhere. OK, one of the countries that's in Africa or you don't. OK, so a yes or a no. Yes, if you think it is of Africa. No, if you think that it isn't and it's somewhere else in the world. So just do that now, please. Number one to 18 in your margin and just pause the video while you do that. OK, so hopefully you are ready now. Let's start to have a look at these pictures. So here is number one. Put yes, if you think that has been taken somewhere in the continent of Africa and no, if you think it hasn't. If you need more thinking time at any point, just pause the video. Number two coming up. Here it is. What do you think? Yes, if you think it is Africa. No, if you think it isn't taken somewhere else in the world. Number three. What do you think? Have a good look at that picture. Look at the evidence and make a decision. OK, number four. Yes, if you think that is Africa somewhere. No, if you think it's not. Here's number five. What do you think? Have a really good look at it. Look at the buildings, look at the environment. What evidence can you see? OK, here's number six. And number seven coming up. So don't forget it's yes if you think it is Africa somewhere and no if you think it isn't. Number eight, what do you think? Has that been taken in a country in Africa or hasn't it? Number nine. What do you think? What evidence can you see to give you a clue as to whether or not that is somewhere in an African country or it isn't? Number 10 coming up. Beautiful, isn't it? Crikey. But what do you think? Is that Africa? Put yes if you think it is and no if you think it isn't.
Number 11, what do you think? What can you see in that picture that could give you a clue? Number 12, coming up, what do you think? Yes, if it is Africa, no, if it isn't. Number 13, look at what you think. Number 14, is this a picture taken somewhere in Africa or isn't it? Number 15, what can we see? What kind of evidence have we got to suggest that this either is or isn't a picture taken somewhere in Africa? Number 16, really cute picture, but is it taken anywhere in Africa? Number 17, what do we think about that one? And finally, last one, number 18. So yes, if you think it is somewhere in Africa, no, if you think it isn't. If you've missed any, just go backwards and forwards in the video and find the ones you've missed. So you can make sure you've got an answer for each one, please. Okay, so the answers are coming up. Let's see if we were right or wrong with our ideas, our perceptions of what we think different places in Africa look like. Okay, the first one, this was Africa. So this should have been yes. This is the Sun City Casino in South Africa. So tick it if you got it right, correct it if you got it wrong. So that's a yes. Number two is also a yes. This is taken in Morocco, which is a country in Northern Africa. Okay, so number three is also a yes. This is a wedding in Sudan. Okay, number four, let's have a look. Yes, number four is also um, taken in Africa. So it is the time of a civil war in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Number five, let's have a look, is also taken in Africa. So it's another yes, Cape Town in South Africa. Number six is another yes. Again, it is Africa, showing a railway station in Morocco. Number seven is another yes, it is Africa. This is Ghana, a football stadium. Number eight, coming up. This is taken in Zimbabwe. So yes, it is Africa again, obviously a school. They're all there in their uniforms. What about number nine? Number nine is another yes. It is a picture taken in Malawi where they are waiting for the president. Okay, number 10, it's that beautiful beach. Yes, this is Mombasa Beach Resort in Kenya. So that is another yes. Number 11, we are looking at Ghana, a fruit and vegetable stall. So it is another yes. This is also Africa. Number 12. This is a photo of the tip of South Africa. So it's a yes. It's the very southern tip of the African continent. Number 13 is a yes. It is Victoria Falls in Zambia. Okay, number 14. Number 14 is not Africa. This was taken in a wildlife park in California, USA. So it's a guy who works in the wildlife park and he's dressed up as a Maasai tribes person. 
beautiful part of the, the, the wildlife park display. So number 14 is not Africa, it is the USA. Number 15. Number 15 is in Africa. It's a picture from a McDonald's restaurant in Morocco. Number 16. Those penguins. It is Africa. This one always surprises everybody because we associate penguins with snow. But in the winter time, most penguins leave Antarctica and they go somewhere warmer. So these ones have gone to South Africa. You also get penguins in Australia as well. OK, next one, number 17. Yes, this is the Sahara Desert in Egypt. So, yes, this is Africa. And finally, number 18. It is Africa. It is Nairobi in Kenya. So out of all those pictures, they were all taken in Africa apart from this one, which was taken in the USA. So it's a bit mean, this quiz, these, these, these guesses. So I wonder how many of them you got right, and I wonder how many of them you were not correct about. So from previous years, I know which are the ones that people often get wrong, and I know what their reasons were. So one that people, ones that people often get wrong are number five. And some of the reasons that people give me when we do this in class is that um, people think that Africa doesn't have buildings that big. It doesn't have skyscrapers. It doesn't have really big roads like this. And it doesn't have all these cars. So when people think that and they think that all, Af all of Africa is poor and all of Africa is desert or filled with grasslands like you see on the TV with us or lions and what have you, then people don't associate the idea of Africa countries as having big cities. So therefore, when they see a picture like this, they don't think it can possibly be Africa. OK, another one people often get wrong is number 10, because people think to themselves, well, you know, I've seen pictures of Africa on the TV and it doesn't look like that. It's deserts or it's um, dirty or the people are poor and they don't associate the idea of um, African countries having beautiful beaches and maybe beautiful hotels and lovely places you can go on holiday. So that is a reason why people don't think that this one could possibly be Africa. And another one that people always get wrong is number 16, because they simply don't think that you get penguins in hot places. So we have that association of the African continent being really hot. So therefore, how can there possibly be penguins there? Now, there might be other ones that you got wrong or you might have even got these ones right. I don't know. Um, but I can guarantee that you probably will have got some of them wrong unless you twigged on to what it was I was doing and the idea that most of those pictures were from somewhere in Africa. So if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of the time our ideas about African countries are often quite negative. We, you know, we think about it as being a poorer continent, there being a lot of fighting, there being people living in poor and dirty and unsanitary conditions. But as we can see from these, these pictures that we've looked at, that simply isn't the case. That isn't always true. So if many of our ideas about Africa are negative, we need to think about, well, why do we think that? And why do those ideas stick in our brain? And where do they come from? So one of these ideas um, that I want us to think about is that a lot of our perceptions about Africa as a continent come from the news. And so this is just a screen grab I've done of the BBC News website. And I just wanted to have a little look at it and think, well, how many of these headlines are positive and how many of them are negative? So obviously we've got something about COVID. So we've got the idea that Lagos um, has got loads of COVID infections and it might be even bigger than the whole total in Africa. So Lagos is a city in Nigeria and it's saying that Lagos has got absolutely loads of COVID. So pretty negative. OK, we have got information here about Spotify. So that's pretty positive, actually, the idea that Spotify is going to expand into African nations. So that's a good one. We have got um, a elections happening 
happening in Niger, but we're told that there's lots of protests linked to those um, elections. So that's a little bit negative, the idea that there's an election, but people are upset and there's lots of um, protests. We've got an Italian ambassador who has been killed um, on a trip to the Democratic Republic of Congo. So an ambassador is somebody who works for the government. So he must have worked for the Italian in government in some way and he's been killed. So negative. We have got information about war crimes trials in Liberia that Finland's doing. So this one isn't so much about Africa itself. This is more about Finland as well, just holding these trials in Liberia. We have got a story about um, a disease called Ebola in Guinea. Um, Ebola is a really, really dangerous disease and we are looking at how some medicines to help people deal with Ebola have been delayed, but they finally arrived. Okay, so that's quite negative. It's telling us about a terrible disease that we've got in an African nation. We've got a positive story about vaccines being shared. We've got something that's a bit more negative, the idea that UN peacekeepers are needed. We've got a story about a murder. We've got something positive about some music awards. And then we've got a really sad story here about some giraffes being killed by low power lines. So looking at all those news stories, I think we can agree that a lot of those news stories are negative. But we need to ask ourselves, you know, is it a fair picture? If we think about the news and what it says about the UK, does it always present an accurate picture of our own country? Now, I would say a lot of the time the news for the UK focuses on negative things as well. And I would say that's not really a true representation of the country I live in. So if I think that the news doesn't always represent my country fairly, why would I think that it always represents a foreign country fairly? So I, maybe I need to look beyond the news and I need to find out about African stories and African countries for myself to get a fair picture. Another reason why we can sometimes have very negative ideas about African nations, unfortunately, comes from something that is trying to help. So recently in the news, over the last two or three years, there has been quite a lot of criticism about charities um, peddling negative images from African countries in order to try to raise more money. And Comic Relief in particular over the last couple of years has been accused of this. So I think it was back in 2018, Ed Sheeran was accused of it. And then just in 2019, I think it was, it was um, Stacey Dooley. And it's this idea of, here, poverty porn. The idea that charities like Comic Relief are finding really poor areas and they're sending celebrities and they're making these videos and they're making poverty something that we all look at and stare at. And that really that's not a true and accurate representation of modern day African countries. And no one is saying that there isn't poverty in Africa and that people there don't need support and help. But what they what some African people don't like is this idea that they need to be saved and they need people from outside of their own nations to come in and save them. And people think that that's a really, really negative thing to say. So yes, they need support. Yes, they need help, but they don't need saving. They just need, you know, a bit of a push in, a, a bit of a push to maybe help them out rather than another person stepping in and saying, right, well, I know what to do about this situation. I know how to sort out your country. I will do it for you. Because then that takes power away from people. So these are quite complicated ideas, okay? But I think it is important that we understand that if we're getting our ideas of um, a country from things like charities in the TV and news, rather than from the country itself or from the people that live there, that those views are not going to necessarily be accurate. So hopefully I've made you think a little bit about your ideas about the African continent and the different countries there and where they have come from. And hopefully you are going to be able to see that maybe those ideas need to be changed a little bit. So what I would like you to do now then 
is um, have a go at the just the few questions that are on the form that this video is attached to and it's just asking you for some of your ideas about the photos that you've looked at and what you've learned this lesson if you are stuck with anything then do make sure you give your teachers an email and we will do everything that we can to help you so thanks for your attention and i hope you have a really lovely day okay bye